Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Soil School episode and I have here with me Erica Dowling with Mosaic. How's it going today? Good, thanks. That's good. We are in a uh, very steaming hot field, but uh, we are here to talk about boron. So do you want to talk a bit about boron and why it's important? Yeah, so boron, it's a micronutrient, so still one of our essential nutrients, just not necessarily needed in as big of a quantity as what we would talk with some of our macros, like our NPK and S that we're talking pounds per bushel that we're having uptake. This is more of a one or two grams maybe in in canola for example per bushel so not very high amounts but still really important role and now when we're talking boron it's often it, it's different how it acts in the soil versus how it acts in the plant do you want to kind of elaborate on that right so especially here in western canada most of the crops that we grow in a canola wheat for example um, we don't see a lot of mobility in the plant so the boron is not really moving if you do say a foliar top up it can kind of help out at the time of application, but it's not going to move within the plant very much. So that makes us kind of look at the soil and what our options are for getting it into the plant through the root system and making sure that our um, soil has boron to, to feed our plants with. So what are some of the conditions that might actually indicate whether you have adequate boron in your soil or not? So it all comes down to kind of what your parent material, what your soil structure is like. So if we have a field that has really good organic matter, um, maybe comparing that to a sandier field, we tend to see a lot more boron um, coming from that field that has higher organic matter um, because that's what's going to be um, where we're going to see mineralization and kind of see that boron coming from. So if we look at a sandier field, um, maybe a field with irrigation as well, we often see deficiencies there because boron is a really soil mobile uh, nutrient. So it'll, it'll move within the soil profile with moisture. So if it's a light sandy textured soil and, and we're seeing lots of either rainfall or irrigation, um, we can definitely see some deficiencies in those conditions. Okay, now and elaborate how boron can be used differently within the canola plant. Um, so we kind of talk about it like the iceberg effect is canola might look okay from above ground. We might see some good growth early on, but it really comes down to what does our root system look like. So if we have adequate boron early on in the season, we'll see um, generally a much more extensive root system, which is going to just help us out later in the season with better nutrient uptake, better moisture coming up through the plant. Um, and then above ground, when it comes to, you know, this time of year when we see pods already on the plants, um, boron has played a huge role in that reproductive phase. So when it's flower, when the canola is flowering, um, the, the pollen tube elongation, boron plays a huge role in that. So it can really impact what we end up with for seed set at the end of the year. And now you talked about kind of some of the other nutrients and how we don't always think about boron, but when we're, we're still gonna be applying different nutrients to our crop. Do you wanna mm -hmm. talk a bit about how boron plays into the other nutrients as well? Yeah, so boron is negatively charged, it's an anion, and sometimes we can see some synergies with other nutrients. Um, so applying, say, with a potassium, with a potash product, sometimes we can see some synergies by putting both products together and making sure. We always want to look at a well-rounded, balanced crop nutrition um, plan, right? So making sure that when we address our nitrogen, our FOSS, and our potassium applications, and our sulfur, um, the next thing we maybe want to look to is are we addressing the micros as well to kind of make sure we're getting the most out of the crop we can. If it's in season, um, some things to look for is if we're going to see any boron deficiencies, um, you would tend to see them in the newer growth because those older leaves maybe would have had sufficient supply and then as the new growth appears, we, we maybe aren't seeing that boron anymore. Um, that might be some place to look like if you're going to be a tissue sampling, we generally want to look at those leaves. Um, some other things to look at is if we have the opportunity to soil sample going into fall now, that's a really critical thing to watch so checking on what's your soil texture like what are your boron levels like and like I said it's very soil mobile so it might not even be in every area of the field that you're seeing a deficiency or in every field across your farm but as the texture varies you, you may see some variability in the boron levels as well. And, and when does planning for boron start? I mean like you said we, we talk often in season but I mean mm -hmm. we can be looking towards next year already. When does that planning start? 
Right, so basically right now when we're looking at our soil so soil sampling, um, when we get those results through the winter, that's a great opportunity to plan because we do kind of have that opportunity to top it up in season with a foliar, but ideally if we can get it in the ground right from the get-go, we have the opportunity to see a lot more of those early season benefits, especially in the root system and making sure we have adequate uh, boron going into the season. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Erica. Thanks.